Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Maybe some of you remember the scenarios from the Russian spy. It was a German spy that infiltrated the Russian ship design agency and caused all sorts of mayhem by designing terrible battleships. Now, Tristan has sent in another scenario, and this is, I think, the third, if not the fourth part of the spy setting. The man, the myth, the legend. The double agent so great, not even he knows which side he's sabotaging anymore. He has once again found himself, as it all started, in the Russian Naval Design Bureau, secretly working for the Germans. He will design the worst class of battleships yet, to face off against only a pair of German battleships. Will the purposefully bad ships win yet again? Who knows? Now, originally the scenario called for a pair of German battleships, i.e. two, I've decided to up that to four, otherwise it would be a four versus two. And even as I would be designing a terrible battleship, the chances of it accidentally winning are still too good. So we're going to go with a four versus four, starting range 20,000 meters. Now, the job here is to build something terrible. Build a battleship that is actively sabotaged by the Germans, or at least... Let's say that the design is influenced by the Germans and thereby not the sense that, okay, it needs to have an ABXY format, uh, it needs to have all sorts of fancy gizmos and gadgets on it. No, it needs to be ineffective, as ineffective as I can make it. So let's go with the Modern Tower 2, which already takes up a massive amount of space. Followed by, let's see, that should be able to fit here, Modern Tower 2. Now, why not Modern Tower 3? Well, said the German spy, these technologies are yet untested. Thereby, it is safer to go with some slightly more tested Modern Tower 2. Of course, Modern Tower 3 gives you some more advantages. When it comes to propulsion, um, turbines are fine. Again, use a time-tested technology like turbines. Jesus, that's an intentional, unintentional tongue twister. Um, we're going to go with oil on those, we're going to go with balanced boilers, and auxiliary engines, no, 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 Russian engines never fail, so we don't need auxiliary engines. Uh, bulkheads, no, we have enough bio-robots as it is, so few bulkheads will do, and Russian sailors will work very hard as they're very motivated when the ship starts sinking. Now, Krupp 4, uh, nah, not really. We have all the faith in the Russian capability to sink the enemy ships first, so Russian Krupp 2 armor should be sufficient. When it comes to barbettes... Um, well, we might need some barbette thickness, otherwise I'm not sure we could sell this ship to the Admiralty. Anti-torpedo protection, though? This ship is going to be going up against battleships. But the German spy has not sold these things as anti-torpedo protection, no, they've sold these as ramming protection. And thereby, the Russian Admiralty suddenly paid attention and thought, Oh, we're gonna ram shit. Yes, here we go. Anti-Torp 4. Sorry, 5. In order to make that work, we're also gonna go with a triple bottom. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna make this a complete ram ship. Just full ahead flank. 36 knots. Range, all of it. And... <laughs> one funnel, so that whoever's in this secondary tower is gonna get a full dosage of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, a citadel. Yeah. We're going to make a ramming turtle, so a turtle back armor. Anti-flood? No, no, you don't get it. We want the enemy to flood, so we don't need any anti-flood, right? It's that easy. Reinforced bulkheads? Nah. Who cares about that? We don't want the enemy to have reinforced bulkheads, because then... The reinforced bulkheads will keep the ship safe. No, we don't want that. Acoustics. Yes, we want to listen to the American rock and roll. As the Red October said, so we're going to go with the Sonar 3 against the non-existent torpedoes that the enemy battleships will definitely fire at us. Range finding. Um, not really required if you're building a ship that's designed to ram shit. So, yeah, we're, well, we'd, it would be nice to know what the range is to the target so that we know when we can arrive at said target. Now then, guns. Um, since we're building a ship to ram, I'm not sure if we really need a large caliber gun. 
I don't think so. So, one 9-inch gun should be sufficient. And then... Some other barbets? No? None of you will fit? Okay, fine. You, sit on the deck. So. The Russians have their ramming ship. She's capable of going very long range in order to find whatever needs ramming and actually get there. She's going to get there at 36 knots. She's not going to have a lot of displacement herself. She'll have a turtle armor because, you know, turtles are quite good at ramming stuff at their maximum speed of 2 knots. And uh, when it comes to killing the enemy off with guns, we have 9 inch guns, we should be fine. But, in order to make sure that the Russian Admiralty actually accepts the ship, we're going to go with super heavy shells. Because nothing says Russian like super heavy. Then, when it comes to turrets and how they rotate, well, hydraulics are fine. We're just going to have Igor and Gregor turn these things by hand. These guys are far more competent than any kind of electro-hydraulical gizmos that can turn the turrets faster. And the same boys can also load these things by hand. All this mechanization stuff, it's really not all it's cracked out to be. So auto loaders, enhanced gun load, nah, none of that nonsense. Radio, um, yes. Why not? We would like to know what the enemy is listening to. So we can tune in and listen to that as well. And radar... No, we're ramming stuff with these ships, so I don't need radar. I just need to know uh, what they're listening to, tune to that, and we can use the rangefinder to then pinpoint the exact location where we need to ram the ship. When it comes to armor, uh, this is where the ship might need some. We're going to be ramming with the bow, and that means belt extended armor is going to be critical. I'm, from a gameplay perspective, not even sure if this actually works. I don't know if the game takes this part into account. But we're going to go with 16.5 inches. Come on, work with me here, game. 16.5 inches of belt extended armor. So we're going to have a hell of an armored nose. And when it comes to secondaries, well, we don't have any. But let's say that we were to install any. Uh, I need 50 inch on those. Of course, this doesn't impact the design at all because I don't have a single secondary gun. But it does make me curious to see what it would do. It's 26 tons now. <laughs> if I change this from 5 inch to 50 inch armor on the secondaries. The turret, the, the triple 2 inch gun goes from 8 tons to 26 tons. <laughs> right. Uh, in order to secure the survivability of these two-inch guns, we're also going to have two over here, I would need to lower the armor on the conning tower. No, uh, on the main belt. Because you know what, we're not using the main belt that much, it's just ramming. So all that we're here to do is ram the bow into the enemy ships as hard and as fast as we can. And I don't know if the ship's capable of turning very quickly. Well, she is actually. 579 meter turning circle. Huh. Not bad. So, this is the Sviataya Troitska. Capable of ramming anything that can terrorize the Russian Navy. Who needs a battleship? We have ramming. Now, the Germans are somewhere to the north. This is an excellent opportunity. Ships. We have Riga, F. Staffi, Imperor, Imperator Nikolai 1. And for some reason, the Sviataya Troitsa is in a separate division. You guys are going to go in a line abreast formation. Loose. No, not actually not loose formation. Normal formation. Otherwise, the game is going to cause all sorts of trouble. Oh, it seems like the Germans already found us. Not to worry. Not to worry. Our secondaries will outlive anything with 50 inches of armor. Because, you know, these 2-inch guns, they can be very, very instrumental in... Wait. They can be very instrumental in dealing with destroyers. Unfortunately, it seems like the shipyard didn't quite make them tall enough to peek over their protective shield here. 
So I guess that this is part of the 50 inch protection that these things have. Uh, the turret here, this 2 inch gun actually does work, albeit probably somewhat limited. Now, increase speed to 32 knots, wait until the ships are in formation, then cut them loose, and then find me some Russian, or oh, sorry, German ships to ram. Because that's what we're here for. Seems like the Germans have no shortage of guns, considering the amount of shell fire that's coming in. Hold on, did that just bounce off, bounce off your nose? Well, with 16 and a half inches of belt extended armor, I'm not surprised. You're just not supposed to be able to do that. Troitska, Troitska, where are you going? Ugh. Russian captain's doing fancy maneuvering, and thereby, uh... Oi! Oh, it's only 13-inch guns. Oh, this is fine. Bring it, Germans. Bring it. Proud Russian warships, ready for a fight. This is probably one of the worst designs that I've ever created, considering I don't even have Crypt 4. Crypt 2 armor, standard bulkheads, few of those bulkheads. Yeah, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Good lord. Could you just make a move already? Everybody, out of this division. Flank speed. You. Flank speed. Flank speed. Everybody's going to get their own German warship to ram. And we will once again re-establish the Russian superiority. Enemy detected. Fire the 9-inch. Prepare the 2-inch gun. That's our true weapon. we got to make sure that this thing gets hit. And I have no doubt that the 2-inch guns with Lidite... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna cause all sorts of damage. <laughs> Gentlemen, the enemy has been detected. And they're heading over there. So that's where we're going. Imperator Nikolai, you're gonna take the lead ship. Riga, you're gonna take the second. You're gonna take the third. And when the Sviataya eventually joins us, you're gonna take the fourth. Move. Now, all silliness aside, I think this this huge nose armor that I have is actually protecting me. <laughs> Which it shouldn't. <laughs> These ships are supposed to be terrible. I really love that 2-inch gun that's just unable to fire here, by the way. Maybe as an anti-air gun. But that's really the only job that it could do. Although I would not be surprised if I find that the guns do go off. Because the game might not care very much about the restrictions from part of the superstructure there. Now, proud Russian warship. There we go. Posing for the new promotional, I mean propaganda poster. A.K.A. thumbnail. How do I get this hot back on? There we go. What? How are we doing damage? Stern belt extended. Okay. Identification 59%, 57. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do this much damage, guys. Leave something for the ram. Wow, the German warships are really not accurate. Also, when a salvo comes in, just look at how it bounces off. I said, and then promptly I get pinned by something. No, that didn't hit me. Go on. Try again. 94% ID, excellent. Nope. It's like they suddenly lost attention. They lost interest in my ships. Especially in the Imperator. Christ, you're far behind.
Ah, there we go. Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse. Standard complement of bulkheads, 13 inch guns. Are you an actual reasonable design? Yeah, you are. See? Germans. Making re decent ships. ABXY format, 8 inch casemates, 8 inch secondary, 4 inch casemates, 2 inch secondaries. Or oh, sorry, 2 inch casemates actually. Speed, 28 knots. Not a match for the Russian ramming ships at 36 knots. If they would bother to get up to that kind of speed. Oh, they are. So far, I'm actually surprised at the level of damage that I've been able to do at 57 points of damage versus their 126. Doink. <laughs> Armored bow, I'm telling you, it works. It's not supposed to work this well, but it kind of works. Doink. Riga doesn't care about your incoming 13 inch shell fire. What's your chance to pen me? 6%? These ships are supposed to be terrible, not win. Oh god, I might actually have designed something that works in my attempts to make something that does not. Look at this, we're doing damage to the stern battleship. To the, 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 the trailing one. 110 versus 161. What? This is not how it's supposed to work. How much have I ricocheted so far? Thirty-four ricochets and twenty blocked. <laughs> what? <laughs> How about Riga? Eight blocked, twenty-nine ricochets. <laughs> if Staffy hasn't been attacked at all, or at least no, she hasn't been attacked at all, and neither have you. In the meanwhile, we're very slowly starting to take this thing apart. But lo and behold. The two-inch guns have opened up. And yes, that is indeed the two-inch guns that have zero clearance over the gun shield. I think. Yeah, they just decided to fire right through it. Well, that's exactly what armor is for. Protecting the gun and making sure that the gun itself can still function. Unfortunately, what? what? The two-inch gun is able to do damage now? Main tower penetration, four points of damage. Uh oh. Gregor, start hosing, buddy. Because it's going to get pretty wet inside the ship pretty soon. Time to make the, uh, the yeah, make the Odin the new target of the Imperator. Come on. Bring it in for the Russian bear hug. It's just a uh, 45,000 ton Russian bear hug. Which is arguably still the smallest that I could find for Russian ships. At least with this type of hull. Stop blowing holes in my ship. I still need to make it to the Odin. Now see this. This right here is where the rangefinder comes in. Because now I can see where the ship needs to go. At least that's how it was sold to me by some sort of... German who thought he had something to say about ship design. And he might have been right, because now the Imperator knows exactly where to ram the Odin. Are these two-inch guns actually doing something? They are? Wow. I'm just concerned that the Imperator Nikolai I might not make it to the target. At all. At this point, the Germans have definitely exceeded the amount of damage that I've been able to do. So what I could try and do is just park myself in the way of the Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse. And make sure that I still do some kind of ramming damage. Full reverse. Slow this thing down. How much damage have you blocked? 93 blocked and a... Oh. Bye-bye. 
Did you pop your turret? No, it just got killed off. It's It didn't fly off the handle. That's good. Alright, you sunk one of my three, my four ships. You're gonna feel the wrath from the Riga now. The angle that the Riga is coming in on is actually pretty good. 8% chance to pen. The Kaiser has 24. Come on, have at it. Seventeen percent and dropping. Seventeen two, seventeen one. Use the rangefinder. Find a good weak spot on the Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse to ram. And prepare our super armored bow for ramming maneuvers. Turn off the collision avoidance. We have found a nice point on your stern. And here we go. Look at how much that thing is being knocked off course. Jesus. Well, that took Riga a bit of her structural integrity. A bit more than I would like. We have, however, inflicted some ramming damage and flooding damage on the German battleship. Uh, Sphia, you got a bit too far ahead there. Fifty percent chance to pen. Hold on. You have what? Nine point eight inches of armor plus a hundred percent. What can I reliably pen at one thousand meters? Seven inches. Um. Yeah, that's basically nothing. Well, I'm still doing something. The problem is now I need to turn around and I need to try and be quick about it. But the Kaiser might be slowing down. Unfortunately, ramming damage is still not listed here. So, the perfect performance from the Riga over here against the Kaiser is not actually registered by the game. You just either completely fluffed your 13-inch salvo, or you blocked it. No, it penned. Pen over pen, pen. Through the mid-belt. Oh, but that was from the Kaiser. Never mind. The Odin didn't actually successfully do any damage. Good. All right, pay attention. You're going to take the Braunschweig. You're going to take the Koning Adlet. Get ready. Assume that the ship's going to be there by the time that I get there. See? Russian sailors. We don't need bulkheads where we're going. We just need to ensure that we have some really, really motivated guys down below decks. We're getting rid of all the water in a timely manner. Straightforward, easy... Just start hosing. Unfortunately, it seems like the Russian design might not be all it's cracked out to be. Considering the lack of, well, substantial damage that we're seeing. See, this is what you call the Russian pincer ram maneuver. We have the Avstafi coming in from the north, northwest. And we have the Sveataya coming in from the southeast. And we can hit the König Albert from one side, and we can hit the Braunschweig from the other. And of course, the AI has no idea what to do with this. <laughs> Bring it. Svea, I need you to turn harder. Oh, this is going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Right on your bow. Hit him under the magazine. See, it's more effective than the 9-inch gun. Unfortunately, I'm seemingly going down faster than they are. How's the other guy? How's Riga? Oh, not great. Riga is not great. Now, we took the f Staffi down from 100% to 44%, or 90% something, whatever she had left. 
And the brown shrike was well, almost full health, I think. And got taken down to 64%. So it seems like the ramming damage is not that effective, unfortunately. See ya, Thaya. Get ready. Drive me closer. I want to hit them with my vodka. I mean, with my sword. Don't... Don't collision avoid. Turn hard to starboard. Damn it. Do I really need to f go full reverse? Because if I do that, I lose engine power and I won't be able to ram at all. Ah. I think this German man that was assisting us in the design of this ship is not really... Not really that capable of designing a ship as much as he said. Because believe it or not, but the Russian ships appear not to be winning this one. And the captain of the Sviataya Troitsa needs some education in how to properly maneuver his ship. Because as opposed to what I thought was going to happen, he completely managed to miss the ship. Oh, ammo detonation on the Afstafi. That's problematic. Now, Sviataya crew, pay attention. When we come alongside the König Albert, I want you to throw over the anchor. I don't care how you do it, you're a strong, burly Russian man. Throw the anchor onto the König Albert. When we go down, she goes down with us. That is, if we don't accidentally fluff the turn again. So here's what I think is going to happen. It's not actually... Damn it. How did that happen? I was supposed to ram you. Why the hell did you have an ammo explosion? How did I manage to do that with a 9 inch gun? I hit the mid belt. That caused a fire, caused engine 3 to get damaged, caused the rudder to get damaged. Oh, see it wasn't me. <laughs> it was this guy. <laughs> Trying to sink the Sviataya. Or hit the Sviataya. Accidentally hitting the König Albert. And blowing it up. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up. Oh, this might be an even better thumbnail. Oh, man. <laughs> Unintentional side effects of ramming. The enemy is going to kill itself. Now, this is unfortunately the last ship that I have left. But Braunschweig seems to be coming back for more. So, we're going to try the anchor maneuver again. We're going to throw the anchor from the Riga over to the Braunschweig. And we get, well, when we potentially get killed off. Maybe inevitably. Uh, we'll be able to take the Braunschweig down with us. Don't you dare. Shit. Uh, they're gonna make it out. Hold on. This does give me an idea for another scenario. If I make a ship that has an incredible amount of armor, and I sail alongside a hostile ship, which is getting, or when my ship is getting shot at by another hostile ship, I might be able to attract fire from that ship and thereby have them hit themselves. That might actually work. This thing is taking a level of punishment that is pretty impressive. Oh. You can't do that and then get a flash fire. I think it knocked both 9 inch turrets clean off. Yeah, this one's gone. That one's gone. But hey, see this? This is where the 50-inch armor on the 2-inch guns comes in handy. Because they're all functional. Right? 
I knew it was going to come in handy at some point. <clears throat> Two inch guns, 50, 50 inches of armor, no problem. Eh. Still, <coughs> believe it or not, I did 4,000 damage. Not through ramming, but through other sources. And one of the sources was the ammo detonation that the Germans caused on their own ship. So, um, who wins? Well, maybe not the Russian Navy. Um, I suppose the German spy wins again. And by just, well, casually influencing some of the design decisions from the Russians, he was able to cause the destruction of four Russian warships. So maybe the ramming design wasn't the best. Maybe we need to hire a different designer. Anyway, I hope you guys got a good laugh out of this scenario. I try to make these things as silly as possible from the time to time. And let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you soon for another one.